My name's Aaron Dander, I'm 37 years old and back when I was studying here, I studied AVCE Art and Design. So at this moment in time, I'm a freelance concept designer, which is basically a fancy way of saying I draw pictures for a living. Um, the industry I work in is predominantly entertainment design. So mostly I've worked on games. Um, the most popular game or the most common old game is Destiny 2. And that's what I've worked on. Um, at that point in time, it was the clearest pathway to the course I wanted to take, which was transport design at university. I didn't know that was a course around that time, um, but it was, basically I wanted to be a car designer at that point in time. So I did an engineering course prior to that at a different college. It was not a thing that was working for me or was going to get me to where I wanted to get to. And I saw this course, took it, and I guess the rest is history. I thought that was the pathway that you just had to go to college after school. There wasn't a sixth form at the school for me at the time um, that had the pathway that I wanted. So it was a case of looking around. And as I mentioned a second ago, like it was not straightforward for me to find the pathway that I wanted to, but this uh, college had the course that I needed. Also to get into uni, I needed a portfolio and the portfolio that I had at the time was not a good one. So I thought, let's get to college, let's make one. And yeah. Firstly, I learned a lot. And I always think back to this, like we just spoke a second ago of how long ago my course was, and it was quite a while ago. But even to this day, I still think about lessons and moments whilst I was at college that I still carried through that I would probably say still haven't even mastered yet, which is interesting because it just shows that there's so many things that you can learn and get better at, but still not conquer. But this still can help you if that makes sense. But yeah, there's the hard skills. So in terms of like, just being a better artist, to being a better designer, um, decision making, taking time to really take care of my own craft and my own identity as an artist, but also on the organizational and mental side. So around that time, looking back now, I was not a very organized person. I was someone who's a bit all over the place in terms of time management. And there were some scary moments in terms of like deadlines and stuff, which took me a while to kind of get used to, but I remember I won't go into too much detail, but I remember many times my instructors and tutors intervened and helped me out, kind of like nudged me into the right path. And if they hadn't done that, I don't know what would happen. So yeah, I'm very thankful for that time. And also, um, as well as the skills that I learned, like as an artist, as a designer, some life skills that I picked up, I've taken going onwards and also will take me forever now. So in terms of things that I learned was a lot about how much I didn't know about art and design. I just thought I want to design cars, I want to draw vehicles. That's what I want to do. But learning things like textiles, learning things like different aspects of 3D design, illustration, photography, digital art. Most of my work now is based digitally. And that was my first introduction in college to Photoshop, which at that point in time was kind of like, you should try it out. It's going to be a thing. And now it's almost like everything now. Um, so those particular things, it's interesting how those were, I guess you could say, summer introductions. So I'm really opened my eyes to new skills and I've just taken them and run with it since. And it's, yeah. So um, a lot of those kind of skills, like introductory skills, learning new things and just really, and again, looking back, uh, I'm saying that a lot because this has been a big gap, but looking back, like how much it opened my eyes to having an open mind to yourself as a creative, as a professional, um, because back then, although I was very focused on this particular thing, it was, I guess you could say a bit limiting because I was so focused on it, but like opening up a little bit to different things enables you to like almost get cheat codes from all the different areas and apply it to your thing. Really what defines it is almost either the industry you end up in or the company you work for, because they might have like a distinct style or a distinct product range they tend to make so like for example if you're working on a sci-fi game you're most likely going to be doing stuff that's visually in that pocket as opposed to maybe something that's like say a Tim Burton movie which is a completely different visual aesthetic and the, doing something that's so specific has its own like little skill sets for example however at the core of art and design and being an artist being a designer there's just these core fundamental things that you often forget um, through bad habits, but then you always go back to, which is a case of either understanding color, understanding theory, understanding shape, understanding form, and all of these things. Um, 
that really I decided to like, I guess, put my foundations into and really pay attention to was my college course because that was where it's kind of like highlighted to me that this is going to be important for you. And it was mentioned a lot in the Virginia course as well. Like this is going to be important for you. Trust me. And you'll find out later. And there's this, and there's also certain things as well that I learned that at that point in time, I thought, um, kind of like a bit of what I mentioned before, like, I don't think I'm ever going to, I would never have gone down that path unless it was introduced to me. And it's become like almost a staple in terms of what I do um, now going forward. And on the other side of it, I don't know if this kind of answers the question, but it's a lot of collaboration involved either directly or indirectly, either from working with fellow artists or just being aware of the other disciplines of art that are around. And there's so much you can like pick up and learn and kind of steal in, in a good way um, that people do and apply it to your own thing. I love working freelance purely because at this moment in time, it really suits my family. It really suits my life situation. And also uh, kind of the way I like to work. I'm in my own space. I got my own setup and I have control in that respect. Also with freelance, you are able to kind of like manage your own time a little bit better. You're in control of like when you can kind of do things as long as you do them. Um, but at the same time, it can also get quite intense and it's not very sociable, especially if you don't pay attention to that. So it can have its drawbacks in the sense of like all of a sudden X amount of time has passed and you literally just been plunked in front of a screen, which is not healthy. And that's saying in hindsight, the, the first part I was like, oh, this is amazing. So one cool thing is of I speak to a lot of other of my own peers in the field. A lot of them are freelance, a lot of them in studio. And it's interesting to see that others, the same as me, who are freelance, who do it and think this is amazing. Others who have done it and thinking I would rather be in a studio setup or in a company setup, and both are completely valid. Um, and some people do it out of necessity because either that, A, in theory, it should lead to better pay um, versus studio because you can take on more projects at once, but it's not for everyone at the same time. But from my perspective, I would definitely recommend it. Firstly, don't be afraid to dive in. And if you are thinking of doing something in art and design, there's definitely a reason to want to do that. That's within yourself. There's something that's drawing you to it. Most likely you're a creative person already. Most likely you've been drawing since a young age or it's always appealed to you. Um, don't lose that. Don't lose your passion or why you want to do something. Even if you might end up like veering away from what you originally wanted to do. Um... Keep doubt at bay, listen to it, but keep it at bay and trust in yourself because one thing about this industry, it's very subjective and there's no like such thing as a 10 out of 10 of what makes something good and what makes something bad. It's all really what your opinion is. However, there are certain skills and standards that you need to have, but it can get a bit and again, I've spoken to a lot of people who have kind of gone through this as well. But let's say, for not, not putting shade on these professions, but let's say you want to be an accountant. I guess you could say it's pretty set what the standards are and what you need to do to be a good one or a bad one. And you can do your job and I guess you can kind of like just switch off and do something else. But with an art thing, it's kind of like always there. And a lot of your own personality is infusing it. A lot of insecurities are infusing it as well. So if you're doing it for a job, for example, you might do something and they'll be like, we don't want that. That doesn't mean they don't want you, but it can affect you in that way. And I think for a lot of young guys I, I do speak to as well, that's always spinning in their brain. Like the insecurity and like, am I valid? Do I get the validation or is this good enough? Listen to that as well. Don't hide, but don't hide from that. But at the same time, to finish this rambling answer, um, don't be afraid of your own creativity.